So, you know, within Bitcoin circles, it's been framed for a long time as the answer to fiat, to the debt-based monetary system. But what you're saying is that the powers that be in the U.S. are poised to use it to perpetuate us into the new era of the debt-based monetary system. Yes, I am, for sure. You know, this universal ledger that Larry Fink's talking about is going to be the debt data system. You're producing money, like, you know, out of thin air. Right. essentially yeah. and you're able to do that i mean the natural world is vast and huge mm -hmm. and they're doing this they're financializing it all as framing it as the only way to save the planet right. but really it's the only way for them to save their insane debt racket next step going forward will be the tokenization of financial assets i believe the next generation for securities will be tokenization of securities blackrock is in on the tokenization race in this explosive interview Writer and investigative journalist Whitney Webb is joined by Bitcoin Magazine Editor-in-Chief Mark Goodwin as they both reveal BlackRock's hidden agenda. I need to know and I need to know now. Whitney kicks off the video by discussing the new financial system that's being built. This financial system, which uses the mask of blockchain-issued central or commercial bank digital currencies to hide what is truly just programmable, surveillable money, is being built by the same people the Bitcoin community just welcomed with open arms. Whitney also explains that for BlackRock, it doesn't stop at merely controlling people's money. Rather, Larry Fink is obsessed with the idea of tokenizing natural assets and even people. In broad daylight, there is a subtle but aggressive movement to completely destroy the concepts of human rights. And even worse, the one tool that could stand against the aggressors is now being co-opted. And according to Whitney, BlackRock will very likely get away with all of it. The result, a society where everything, including lakes, trees, and human beings is tokenized, easily surveillable and controllable. The future is truly grim. Let's hear it from her. A lot of the people building this system are people that are debt barons, essentially. I mean, BlackRock in particular had a really big role to play in the whole COVID monetary situation. Um, at the same 2019 Jackson Hole meeting where Mark Carney talked about the new financial system to come is when BlackRock presented their going direct paper, which was the policy that was followed essentially and exactly when COVID hit just a few months later. And BlackRock utilizes debt to increase its profitability and power and ownership of things around the world. And and honestly, since debt's been such a, a big part of the control system for a long time, it's, um, you know, the people that can control the most debt on Wall Street and stuff tend to be the most powerful and the most successful, right? Yeah, totally. How are you seeing BlackRock preparing itself for the token is not the token future? How are these known debt barons preparing to retain debt baron status as the world in debt goes digital? Well, it seems like in Larry Fink's case in particular, there's a big ambition there to develop new asset classes that can be used to basically fuel their existing business model and perpetuate it for like millennia forward. You know, I've been writing about for a few years of the whole idea of natural assets, uh, what they call nature's economy. And one of the groups that has been sort of propelling this, you know, has a graphic on their website called the opportunity. And they show there the existing amount of asset in the world economy and then show what it, if we unlock natural asset, how nature's economy, you know, it's like six times the amount of existing assets in the economy today. And so as an asset manager, BlackRock having, being able to unlock and take control of as many natural assets as possible that aren't currently part of the financial system is obviously a way for them to perpetuate what they do and deepen and expand their control over not just people in the existing financial system, but really over the natural world as well, and essentially turn everything alive into a tradable Wall Street financial product. And the goal, as Fink has stated, is to have all of this on a universal ledger on blockchain presumably, and have it be trackable and surveillable, which is uh, interesting if you look at it through the context of risk management, which is something that Larry Fink is very open as having been one of the guiding lights of his whole career. And so by having it all surveillable and automated in a sense, you know, he's able to have his risk management AI thing, you know, Aladdin sort of exercise control over it in unprecedented ways, I think. A lot of what's happening now as we're moving into this new financial governance system is the push to change all of the infrastructure towards this, you know, quote unquote, 
quote green, a green model, I guess, or decarbonization, which is of course interface with the global carbon market, but not necessarily. So like it doesn't have to be, but the push is obviously to create a bunch of new infrastructure all over the world. And BlackRock is positioning themselves to be one of the key players in that space. Uh, they acquired, I think they're called GIP, one of the biggest infrastructure developers in the world. I think one of their top guys at Davos just a few months ago was talking about how they're betting really big on infrastructure going forward. And it's going to be one of the biggest investment opportunities of the next several decades, actually. So I think they're quite ambitious. And, you know, if people aren't aware of this, I'm sure they'll get away with it, but we'll see. BlackRock just might get away with it. Whitney has described how the debt barons are building the new financial system and why it's so dangerous. Whitney has exposed BlackRock for what it truly is, a profit-chasing organization with the aim of expanding the extent and limits of their control. BlackRock plans to control everything, not just money. Getting six times richer while at it is merely icing on a maniacal cake, but it's not over. Next, Whitney and Mark discuss how Bitcoin is about to be co-opted for this purpose as well. Let's head back and... So, you know, Fink recently said that he views Bitcoin specifically as a technology for asset storage. And in this multipolar currency paradigm, it's likely there's going to be, you know, in multipolar reserve assets, they want to move away from the appearance, at least, that the U.S. dominate the reserve assets of the world. Do you think Bitcoin has a place in that? And do you think it's possible for the U.S. government to sort of wizard of Oz that, to sort of be able to manipulate countries through that potentially? 100%. Yeah, I mean, we talked earlier about how Bitcoin basically is digital M0. It's this digital base layer mm -hmm. money, digital base money, and all of these other dollar denominated things mm -hmm. and Ethereums and all these whatevers are, are you know, debt based. And Larry Fink specifically talks about, you know, yeah, it's technology for storing assets. It's this universal ledger of the state that we can shove any integers into any bit and use it to uphold the state of all sorts of other assets. The US, I think, has the most to gain from Bitcoin, actually. I and mean, it's sort of this weird, you know, it's been free so much so the opposite, but the U.S. has so much Bitcoin. We, the United States, has a million plus Bitcoin. We're seeing them embrace, you know, 11 spot ETFs since the middle of January. On January 11th, 11 of them were approved by the SEC. The DOJ has seized like a quarter million Bitcoin. We're seeing companies like MicroStrategy basically doing a speculative attack against the U.S. dollar while their headquarters is 15 minutes away from the CIA at Langley. They have 200,000 Bitcoin. The ETFs with Grayscale and with the new BlackRock and Fidelity ETFs, there's like almost 600,000 Bitcoin now within the United States, not to mention the retail wallets and Tesla and all the other treasuries that exist, Block. There's a huge push within the United States, within the borders of the United States to acquire as much Bitcoin as possible. So, you know, within Bitcoin circles, it's been framed for a long time as the answer to fiat, to the debt-based monetary system. But what you're saying is that the powers that be in the US are poised to use it to perpetuate us into the new era of the debt-based monetary Yes, I am, for sure. The U.S. government currently holds about 1% of the total Bitcoin supply. In a move that's paradoxical, given the message that representatives like Elizabeth Warren preach, they refuse to sell this stash, combine these holdings with the ever-growing size of the recently approved spot ETFs, and it's evident to anyone who cares to look that the actions of the US government directly contradict their words. Whitney explains that we are witnessing Bitcoin being co-opted, while the parties that are doing the co-opting pretend to resist it. The end goal of this is to utilize the Bitcoin Bitcoin blockchain as the tool to create programmable, surveillable money. But that's not all. Organizations like BlackRock also have a vested interest in using the Bitcoin blockchain as a settlement layer to tokenize new classes of assets. The creation of BlackRock's digital asset fund on the Ethereum blockchain seems to be a mock of what's to come, and it is truly frightening. What do you think about Whitney and Mark's shocking revelations? To see the latest in crypto news, watch this video here.